Hi everybody, and today I'm going to read this story called The Tear Thief. This is one of my favourite stories. Listen out to the beautiful language. Late one evening, the tear thief crept into a town. The tear thief was invisible and carried a silvery waterproof sack on her back. Only if you happened to look into a puddle as she was passing could you see what the tear thief looked like, because the puddle was the one thing that showed her reflection. The tear thief had short, spiky white hair and big grey eyes. She wore a handkerchief dress and silk slippers that made no sound as she walked. The tear thief came to a quiet road with a neat row of houses and flew into a tall tree for a good look and a listen. It was the hour between supper and bedtime. All the curtain windows were flushed with light and enticing smells of soup and stew and pasta and onions, the tea thief's favourite, and rhubarb crumble were drifting up and away into the deepening dusk. The tear thief listened hard with sharp eyes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. A child was crying. The tear thief jumped lightly from the top of the tree onto the roof of the first house. She crept along the rooftop, silent as smoke, listening, listening until she heard the crying again. Ha! The crying was coming from number 17, and quick as a blink, the tear thief slid down the chimney into the attic and pressed her ears to the floorboard. Boo hoo 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 hoo! And down the stairs, sly as steam, sneaked the tear thief onto the landing and into the bathroom. The boy was sitting in the bath, crying. His mother was kneeling by the side of the bathtub, holding a pink bottle of strawberry shampoo. The tear thief sat perched on the edge of the bath, watching excitedly and loosening the top of her sack. I don't want to be shampooed, wailed the boy in the bubbles. Stop the silly crying, said the boy's mother, or the tea thief will hear you. The boy stopped crying and stared at his mother, and a single plump tear dangled from the end of his nose like a pearl. The tear thief pounced. In one quick movement, she snatched the cleaning tear from the boy's nose and popped it into her sack. Oh, gasped the boy as his last tear seemed to disappear into thin air. I told you, said his mother. That was probably the tear thief. This boy and his mother started to laugh, but by now the tear thief had flown across the hall, out through the front door and shimmied halfway up a lamppost. She sat on the top, swinging at her legs and listening. And through an open stairs window at number 25 came the sound of a bad-tempered screaming and sobbing. And the tear thief slipped down the lamppost and slithered up the drain pipe to get up to the window. Her wide grey eyes stared at the child's bedroom. A red-faced girl in a nightdress was jumping up and down, having a terrible tantrum and scattering tears all over the place like fistfuls of gravel. I want chocolate! I want chocolate! bawled the girl. And the tear thief hopped into the room and began to steal the girl's tears. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, into the silver sack they went. Forty, fifty, sixty, seventy. And the more tears the tear thief collected, the more tired the girl became, until eventually she sat down on the floor with her back against a wall and fell fast asleep. And the tear thief slipped out through the window. A light rain began to fall orange under the street lights, and the tear thief worked hard. She stole the oddly long shape of a boy who trapped his finger in a flute. He stole the tiny tears of a baby having a nappy changed into the sack, the tears shed by a pair of twins fighting over an orange teddy bear. Into the sack, two pear shaped tears from the sly cheeks of a boy being caught lying. The tears were jewels inside the darkness of the sack clinking and chinking and winking. Tears of rage were red and glowed like rubies. Tears of envy or jealousy were green as emerald. Tears of self-pity were turquoise. Scared tears were like white, like moonstones, and guilty tears were amber. Rain gurgled and chuckled in the gutters, and here there was a puddle, and stared up from the pavement. The tear thief listened, peeped, crept, climbed, pinched, nicked, filched and purloined until her sack was brimming with tears. She set off down the road as the last of the rain stopped falling. The girl was standing alone under a lamppost on the corner. As the tear thief sneaked past the girl, she noticed she was quietly crying. The tear thief stopped. There was always room in the sack for a few more tears. And she looked carefully at the girl's tears. They were very special because these were tears of real sadness. They were very special. They could, tear thief could tell that just one of these tears was worth a hundred cried over spilt milk or a thousand crocodile tears. She reached out her pale hand and plucked one from the girl's cheek. Just then, the girl wiped her eyes off with her sleeve and looked sadly into the puddle. The tear thief's mischievous face stared up at her. Eek! squeaked the girl and turned around to look behind herself. There was nobody there. The girl looked at the puddle again and sure enough, there was a reflection of the tear thief. 
Who are you? asked the girl. I'm the tear thief. The girl knelt down by the puddle and stared hard at the tear thief's reflection. How old are you? As old as joy and sorrow. And where do you live? In every place where children cry. Where are you going to steal my tears? I mean, I said the face of the tear thief in the puddle. Your tears are the most precious of all. They are worth more than diamonds. And the girl stood up again. Her face was still wet with tears, like the leaves of the trees when the, with the rain. And she gently wiped off one of her own tears with her fingertips and stared at it. She could see the reflection of the tear thief there as well. But why are my tears so precious? asked the girl. I will tell you everything, said the tear thief. If you give me your tears, just close your eyes and listen. So the girl closed her eyes, and the tear thief gathered the tears from her lashes and cheeks as she whispered to her. Each night in the hour between supper and bedtime, I visit a different street, and I steal the tears of every child who cries. When my sack is full, I climb up to the moon and pour my sack of tears into moon's light. The light of the moon is made from the tears of laughter, or pain, or anger, or boredom, from every kind of tear you can think of. But the most beautiful part of the moon's light comes from tears of pure sadness, and that is what your tears are. Yes, said the girl, because I've lost my little dog. She opened her eyes as she said this and looked again. But there was nobody there. She ran along the street to the next puddle and stared into it, then the next and the next and the next. But they were just ordinary puddles with nothing special in them at all. And the girl ran around the corner, looking down at all the puddles as she ran. Then she ran around another corner and another, searching every puddle for one more glimpse of the tear thief. But there was no use. The tear thief was gone. Woof! And the girl looked up. And a little black dog with white chest was sitting on the tree at the end of the street. And the girl called out the dog's name. It's you, he, she said. I found you. And so she had. Her lost dog was splashing towards her in the puddles. The girl was safely tucked up in bed and the dog was safely curled up in his basket. The rain had stopped completely now and all the puddles were shrinking. The night was calm and quiet. The girl always left her curtains open so she could see the star she was born under if she opened her eyes. She opened them now. And outside her window, a full moon rose, huge and luminous. Oh, gasped the girl. She got out of bed and went to the window. It was the most beautiful moon she'd ever seen in her whole young life. Light poured from it in a million different moonbeams. The girl saw the light of the moon in her garden, turning the leaves of the trees silver. Beyond that, she saw the light of the moon on the rooftops of all the houses. A midnight cat walked along the wall, and the light of the moon made its eyes burn gold. The whole town bathed as it slept. The river lay on its back and gazed at the moon, dazzled and lovesick. The girl looked up. For one brief, magical moment, she could see the tear thief again, pouring and pouring her sack of tears into the light of the moon. It was so bright that tears came to her eyes as she looked. Her dog snuffled in his basket. And in the house next door, on the other side of the wall, the newborn baby started to cry. My favourite story, The Tear Thief by Carol and Duffy. It's such a beautiful story. I hope you picked out all the lovely language in there as well. Thank you very much for listening.